It's another edition of the Agents of Inclusion podcast brought to you by Special Olympics and Odyssey. I'm JR of the JR Sport Brief Show on CBS Sports Radio. Every week we talk to individuals about how sports can help bring us together to be more inclusive. New episodes drop every Wednesday, so subscribe so you don't miss out. For this episode, we're going to Manhattan, Kansas to speak with athlete Michael Carpenter and partner Megan Schnee. Connecting with these two reminded me that family isn't just who you're related to by blood, but who you connect with and who has your back. They've connected through volleyball, amongst other things, and their love of sports has taken them from Kansas to Berlin this summer for the Special Olympics World Games. Let's go to Kansas to learn about their experience in Berlin, how they got connected in Kansas, and what they do when they're not competing. Let's talk to Michael and Megan. It's another edition of the Agents of Inclusion podcast, and this time we're going to be in Manhattan, Kansas, checking in with an athlete and a unified partner that just came back from Berlin, Germany. We're going to find out about their experience. We're going to find out what friend that we might have in common, and we're going to learn more about Michael and Megan. First to Mike. How are you doing, Mike? You good? I'm doing pretty good, I think. (laughs) Beautiful, man. And how about you, Megan? How are you? I'm good. It's a little hot here today. It's in the hundreds, has been all week, so we're getting by. <laughs> oh, it's, it's the summertime. It's supposed to be hot. What's a couple of degrees <laughs> matter, right? 90, 100, 80, all the same. We got spoiled in Berlin, I guess. <laughs> so let me let me start there. Y'all represented Special Olympics, the United States of America in Berlin at the World Games. You're, you're back in Kansas right now. I pose this question to you, Michael, first. How was the experience out in Berlin? It was one in a lifetime. And pretty much one in a lifetime. <laughs> now I hear that, once in a lifetime. That's not to say that you won't go back to Berlin one day, but you're right, the experience once in a lifetime. And for you, yeah. Megan, did you ever think that you would be playing volleyball in Berlin? Not once ever in my whole life, no. <laughs> so what what got you initially involved in Special Olympics as a unified partner? So I originally just started in Special Olympics as a young kid. Um, I met Michael <laughs> when I first started. Um, my, my mom um, is really in charge of our team here, our local program. And so her and my sister and I have kind of just taken things off. Um, We started the first unified team in Kansas back in 2011. So um, we've been doing this for 12 years now and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. No, we like bigger and bigger. Mike, what, what's, what other sports do you participate in besides volleyball? I do bowling, track, softball, football, basketball, Pickleball. Did you forget anything? I mean, you you put him in no. the shame. Man. Did you forget anything? Mike is out no. here. Yeah, out here playing all the sports, man. So what what really attracted you to, to to volleyball? Why is that kind of what got you onto the Team USA? Well, it attracted to me that I've always wanted to do volleyball with my teammates and. I've been being like a part of a family and being part of, you know, supported to other like our team members, our coaches, our community, stuff like that. No, nah, listen, man, we, we're all about family. And, and, and Megan, you talk about your, your mom and, and your family and, and helping to put all of this together. For anyone who isn't real informed about unified sports, what is it and what are the benefits? So unified sports are just sports. Um, the, the thing about unified is that it's not just sports. It's how we, especially, um, that's how we live our lives. Um, it's, there's no differences. Mm-hmm. There's no boundaries. There's no anything. It's just everybody coming together and playing the sport how it's supposed to be played. And becoming a family. I mean, that that's a, that's a good answer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that. And so, Mike, amongst all of the sports that you've played, you rattled off a whole lot. Is there one sport that you want to try that you haven't played yet? I really want to try bike ball. 
What what sport is that? That is like we have like a little net. You have two people, like two, like two and two. Okay. You can see each other and you spike it down with a little ball and you spike it down on the net. It kind of spike up. It's like is a big it... trip or like one of those smaller size trampolines. And you, it's, yeah, it's all spikes. It, and it, so it, it would help us with volleyball knowing how to hit it down and just going long or whatever. You just got to aim it right. So spike ball can get you prepared for volleyball. Yeah, pretty much. I'm a, I'm gonna have to Google that, man. I told you, Mike. You you play all the sports, man. That's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, is there any favorite athlete that you have of all time? Is there any athlete that you absolutely love that inspires you? Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps. Why Michael Phelps, the most decorated Olympian ever in that pool? Why does he inspire you? Because he is tall. He has the arm names like I do, the legs, and plus he has the same smile as me. Oh, I would think your spot, your smile is better than Michael Phelps, man. You give yourself some credit here, okay? What do you think, Megan? I think so. <laughs> we, we all agree. And Megan, for you, what inspires you to keep doing what you're currently doing? Uh, this guy right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, ev everybody that's on our team. Um, and just all of the experiences that we've all had together that, I mean, there's, there's no better feeling than getting together with our special Olympics family and doing what we love. So. And that, that family went out to, to Berlin. What was that experience like away from the volleyball court? The experience was that you're playing in like in a new culture. You have to learn how you know, um, to move to it, like get the use and time change. Right. And pretty much like mostly to um, learn the culture and the time change and all that. Well, let me and, ask and you this, man. For it. Yeah, you got to be prepared. Look, Mike, I've been to Berlin. I also like to eat. How did you like the food? It was a lot of sausage and sweets and meat and stuff, right? Did you enjoy the food out in Berlin? I see we didn't get to go to the pool. No, just the food. Oh, the pool. Oh, I thought I said the pool. pool for a second. No, not the pool, not swimming. You're not my, No more Michael Phelps. I'm talking about eating, man. <laughs> talking about the food. Oh, the food. The food was absolute. It was different. It was different than the USA food. You know that you get the little bit history of what kind of food they eat. Did you love it? Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it too, man. I, I, I'm not one for uh, gaining too much weight, but I, I think I gained a couple of pounds. <laughs> what, what was the experience like for for you, Megan, being out in in Berlin, Germany? Uh, well, I've I love to travel, so I've been lots of places. I've been to Germany before, but to experience it with my family and with you know, the people I love um, that are not blood. Um, it, has, it was just, it was incredible. Um, I love traveling just down the road an hour to our regional, you know, uh, competitions, but to be able to go on the worldwide stage was, I mean, like Michael said, once in a lifetime. Um, but for me, like, I think the coolest part was seeing how the other teams from other countries uh -huh. Um, the similarities, the differences, you know, what they do, like we do, what they do differently, you know, um, that, that was really the, the icing for it, for me, was, yep. was the other cultures and seeing how we can all fit into this Special Olympics puzzle, yep. so. We've heard from quite a few athletes and partners who, who've been to Germany and have now come home that they received gifts and that it wasn't just, hey, let's all get together and play sports but that you also walked away with maybe uh, a new friendship, a new relationship. Maybe you got a new shirt or a hat or, or a different piece of candy that you've never had in your life before. This question is for both of you. I pose it to you first, Mike. Did you receive any gifts? Did you make any new friends? What did you bring back home to the USA from Germany? I brought back home a bronze medal. Big time. <laughs> yeah. And I made um, some really good friends from Italy. 
I think Meg and I and our whole team connected with each other from Italy because they were like a part of our family and we were like a part of their family. I love it, man. If you don't mind me asking, and feel free to say, mind your business, JR. Where is that beautiful bronze medal, man? Where is it? Is it hanging up? Is it in the closet? Did you give it to somebody? Actually, I forgot it, but it's in, it's in a special drawer at my mom's house, which is they don't know anything about. Oh, they don't know what's... She doesn't know what's there? She knows it's there, but I haven't told, told where it was. Oh, okay. Good, you know good. She's gonna watch this, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, the seat. The secret is out now. The secret is yeah. out. Yeah, the secret is out. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, what have you brought back? Well, um, I think a lot of our team. We actually there were several pieces of uniform or clothing that we traded with other countries, which was a big highlight for all of us. Um, you know, from Australia to Italy. Um, Austria, uh, just everywhere. Um, we, we became really good friends uh, with Saudi Arabia. Um, and so we did a lot of trading with them too. So um, the other teams that we played against, they all gave us like either a flag or like a stuffed animal fan um, from their country that was wearing some sort of, you know, special Olympic something. So it was pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. So was this like, um, I know it's an exchange. So what do you do when you have all of these little pieces? Is, do you sew them together after? Do you everybody share a piece? What happens? Well, for, for my clothes, I wear them. Um. <laughs> oh, I thought, um, I mean, I thought like literal pieces, like I'm going to cut you off a flag from USA and hand it to you. Not like the full uh, piece. No, no, okay. it's more of no, like, Hey, here's my, here's my Jersey top. Let me get yours, you know? Sure. Um, and, and just small little flags, but you guys did a lot of training of your buttons oh, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. You know, that was a big one. Yeah. Well, explain so. that to me, Mike, you, 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 you collect buttons. How, how does this work? Yeah. So we have USA buttons and we traded them. We asked them how do you want a USA button? And then they're like, okay, yeah. And they give us one there. Oh, that's a good exchange, man. Having these experiences, both in the United States of America and overseas, it, it has to be rewarding. Mike, what is your favorite part of participating in Special Olympics? Just period. That period? Yeah, what's your favorite part about being a Special Olympics athlete? I just want to be like what Megan said, um, just to learn new stuff, teaching people. I just want to be a coach to the alley sometime. That's my goal. Oh, I think you. I think you're on your way to a, a, achieving that. And I also learned that you and I have a, a friend in common. I think he's about six foot five. I yeah, think he I know weighs you're about, about Dalton. Yeah, yeah about. Dalton. <laughs> Dalton Reisner. Yeah, six foot five, about three hundred plus pounds. Uh, a gentle giant in the NFL. Uh, what's your relationship with Dalton like? So, eight years ago, we Megan was my softball coach, and we had a leadership kind of scrimmage from our team against their team. And Dalton was a freshman in college. So he, I gave him like my glove so he could go out into the field. I pointed my bat to the left field line. I just mad at him. He wow. caught it and he had to throw off his glove because his glove was like, oh, like his hand was a really red print on it <laughs> and then um after the game i gave him my pair of my baseball gloves and he has them as doing like the peace sign above his bed all, all the time wow yeah so this this goes back to when dalton was at kansas state uh-huh that's amazing that's yeah. amazing 
and and to be yeah. able to, to to maintain that and know that that's the case has to make you feel good. What it makes what you feel like I'm someone that he can trust. He's well, like a mentor you, to me. Why is he like a mentor to you? Because from my perspective, I just like to do things, you know. Um, how do I say it again? Impulsive, like doing stuff, you know, without thinking. Mm -hmm. When I do that, I stop and I, you know, do that. But I have to, you know, ask my mom, my dad, or Dalton to help me out with getting that into my head so I can understand not to be impulsive. I understand to to think things through. Um, mm -hmm. What what lessons have have you learned that you can take throughout the rest of your life, Megan? What have you seen and learned from this experience? Just from Berlin or from the unified experience altogether? Just just overall. When I when I hear Mike talk about what 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 he's learned about being impulsive, it's it it's a it's something that he can take with him and keep with him as a human being for life. And just through sure. all of these experiences. What would you say is the biggest thing that you've learned that's changed your life? Um, I think the biggest thing to take from Special Olympics is love and compassion. Um, it, it changes the way that you live your everyday life. Um, I, you know, we talk about how I'm a coach or a partner, but really Michael is already a coach. Um, he teaches me just as much as I could teach him ever, you know, so it's, it's all about the teamwork on and off the field and the court and uh -huh. just carrying that over into everyday life is it's super important. Yeah. And I, I love my life now. <laughs> <laughs> so. And Mike, for you, what, what does inclusion mean to you? Why is inclusion just important? Like if I want, like if I see a athlete on the side having trouble, like having trouble, like, you know, walking or doing something wrong, they get down on themselves. I would go over there and tell them, hey, you can do this. Just, you know, stop and do it. And I would show, I would teach them how to do it, you know, the correct way instead of getting down on themselves. Yeah, I think, I think Megan is right you're you're already a coach i don't i don't think you should have aspirations to be a coach i, I think you're already there thanks man no doubt about it hey just an observation just an <laughs> observation just an honest one uh, megan what what would you say to someone who is just kind of on the outside looking in from this people are going to hear this and go well i I'm not going to Berlin or people are going to hear this or they may say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm a little afraid or shy. What advice would you share to them to kind of move them forward a little bit? You know, it, it all starts with a conversation. Um, you know, I used to be very shy and reserved. Michael was the same way. Um, he, we talked about this earlier today, mm -hmm. even that, you know, being around the comfort and you know, people that you can call friends and family and having all of all of those experiences will make you more comfortable in yourself and make you more, um, you know, just, a, it'll make you a better person. Um, you, it shows you not just inclusion of athletes versus partners versus whoever, it's, it's inclusion of everybody across the board. So, um, you know, it teaches you community, love, mm -hmm. respect, um, mm -hmm. and and really just a lot of support. So, Mike, when it's it's hard for me to hear that that you were shy. It doesn't seem like it at all, which is a good thing. When you're not participating as an athlete, when you're not coaching and helping others, what are some other things that you're into, man? Or what are you watching? What are you listening to? What are some of your hobbies? I like to do artwork. What type of art are we talking? Are you are we drawing? Are you building things? What you doing? Um, I like to draw, and that's all I like to do. Coloring, diamond painting. You ever heard of okay. that? 
No, I, diamond painting? Yeah. It's no, like explain. A picture. You, you might have to look it on Google. Okay. So um, there's a picture with letters and you have little beads to go with that letter, that number. And you just, it's like a high, eye hand coordination. Okay. That sounds like something I could actually do. I, I think I stink at coloring. I probably really suck at coloring, but I think I can follow that. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. But and then about what... the diamond painting is yeah. um, like whenever you do eye hand coordination, it's like in volleyball. You have to look and see where the ball is. You have to go to it. And you have to cut, like, like look at the ball instead of knowing, like, oops, I did something wrong or I did that. You just got to be committed to go for the ball. Okay. Yeah, well, I, my, I don't, I, I got to think about my confidence. I have to Google this now because uh, I'm not all that good at volleyball. And I thought I'd be better at, at diamond painting, but I'm going to have to Google this, okay? Uh, <laughs> I will. What, what about you, Megan? When, when you're not uh, working with Special Olympics, participating as an athlete, what occupies your time? Um, well, I am here at my office right now. I work a lot. Um, <laughs> when I'm not working, um, I go home to, I have two dogs. Um, I love spending time with my family, my friends, um, including this one, <laughs> um, <laughs> when he can put up with me. Um, and, you know, I, I do a lot of sports, so and Special Olympics does take up a lot of my time, so. <laughs> but I wouldn't have it any other way. Listening to the two of y'all, I want to go to I want to go to Kansas and hang out with y'all. This sounds like a blast. We're a lot of fun. Oh yeah, <laughs> it is. If let's let's. Me and her, if we put me and her on the same team, we can have a lot of fun. Yeah. Not I, listen. I feel the vibes, and so let's let's end on on this note, Mike. I need a definition from you. Family. What is it? Cut. Committed. Honor. Nice. There you go. This, no, listen, man. I, I was going to ask Megan the same thing, but we talk about <laughs> trust. And, he stole my answers. Yeah. I did. <laughs> yeah. Trust, honor, and commitment. We could we could put that on a t shirt and just sell it tomorrow. We we, we got we that go. covered. Okay, let's do that then. No, I'll let you do it. You make the money. Okay. Just say I, I, <laughs> okay. Give you the I idea. Go. And, and Megan, now that we got that perfect answer from him, I'm going to ask you a different question. Good. We got the definition of trust. Well, no, we got the definition of family. We got the definition of inclusion. What makes Special Olympics just great? A lot of people think that you need to be someone with an intellectual disability. You might think that you need to be a parent or you need to be an... You can volunteer from school. You can, you can do this. What makes Special Olympics great for society? It makes it, it, it just shows that anybody can do anything. Um, it, if you have a little bit of confidence, if you have a, no confidence at all, you can still do anything that you want to. Um, as long as you have the support, the love, the family around you, you can do anything that you set your mind to. I love the theme based on family. Mike, this is it, man. Dalton is probably going to be watching this. He's probably going to check this out. Do you have a public message that you would like to share with Mr. Reisner? Oh, God. <laughs> Just like if Dalton was right there, what would you say to him? Hey, man. Um, check this out. I hope you and your family can reach out and let me know where you're going to NFL. Okay, listen. Right. You co you could be there to coach him up when he's ready to play. Okay. All right, sir. We love we love Dalton, and I I love chatting with you guys about family. I appreciate the time. I think that's an awesome theme that we can all take. What's what's the next sporting event? We we getting into more volleyball, or we trying something different? I think we are starting up special events volleyball. When does that start? We do have volleyball coming up. When does that start? Uh, September. Volleyball, volleyball, and more volleyball. This is why y'all came back with bronze. I appreciate uh -huh. y'all taking the time to hop on and join us on Agents of Inclusion. Thank you, Mike, and thank you, Megan. 
Thank you very much. Thank you to Michael and Megan for sharing your stories and encouraging others. I want to hang out with them for real. To learn how you can make your own connections and be more inclusive, go to specialolympics.org to find out how and where you can get involved. I'm JR from CBS Sports Radio, and this is the Agents of Inclusion podcast brought to you by Special Olympics and Odyssey. New episodes drop every Wednesday, but don't just follow and subscribe. Embrace others, help folks out, and be inclusive.